Hello. Hello. A very warm good morning to all of you present here in offline and online mode. Uh, respected Father Joseph Nelanan, Pro Vice Chancellor Assam Don Bosco University. Father John Isos, Register Assam Don Bosco University. Dr. Manoranjan Kalita, Director, School of Technology, Assam Don Bosco University. Respect to all HODs present, my dear colleagues and students. We have joined here again today to attend the concluding day of two day national workshop on patents and entrepreneurships. Uh, workshop is organized by Board of Research, Innovation and Capacity, Capacity Building Institutions, Innovations Council, in Innovation and Startup Sale, Assam Don Bosco University. Catalyzed and organized, supported by Assam Science, Technology, Environment Council. Patent Information Center, Government of Assam. Now we have among us Dr. Zupi Gogoi, Associate Professor, National Law University and Judicial Academy, Assam, in online mode, uh, to deliver a speech on patent basics, patent registration in India. Dr. Zupi Gogoi is Associate Professor of Law at National Law University and Judicial Academy, Assam. Previously, she worked as an assistant professor of law in faculty of law, University of Delhi during 2018 to 2021 and the Indian Law Institute Delhi between 2012 to 2018. Her research interests are intellectual property rights and human rights. She has made academic contributions in the form of books, articles, case comments, newspaper editorials in critical areas of law. She has also coordinated online IPR courses in ILI. Additionally, she is involved in national and international research projects and has been organizing various training programs and academic discussions on important legal topics. She holds a master's degree in law from Indian Law Institute, Delhi, and a PhD degree in law from Gujarat National Law University, Gandhinagar, on the law of geographical indications. I would like to request ma'am to address the gathering in blended mode. Yeah, I hope I am visible and audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to share my PPT. Is that possible? Yes. Uh, I wanted to share a PPT. Is it possible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a second. Okay, is my PPT visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Before I start my presentation, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Assam Don Bosco University for, uh, pr for inviting me to this national workshop on patent and entrepreneurship. So the topic that I have been asked to deliver today is basics of patent criteria for patent registration. Um, so, uh, so I'd like to start my presentation. Just a second. Okay, so uh, I think many of you might be aware that what is intellectual property? Uh, nevertheless, I thought I would share a little bit of thoughts on what is intellectual property. So basically, intellectual property is cert are certain creations of the human mind. So our lives are filled with products of human creativity and invention. So the moment we get up in the morning, you know, the let's say we see the ceiling fan above our heads. Uh, from the very small, small things that we use in our daily life, like a washing machine or a refrigerator or the phones or the music, the books that we read, the paintings that we have, the family photographs that we have and we have put it probably in our house somewhere. So all these are product of human creativity. 
and uh, you know and of course mobile phones which are an integral part of our life these days so this is again a creation of the human mind and because it is a creation of a human mind it was believed that there should be certain rights given to the creator of these kind of intellectual property and this entire rights which came out came to be known as intellectual property rights so in simple words intellectual property rights are certain rights which are given to the creators of such work so that they are able to exploit commercially or otherwise their own creation without any interference from others so what does it mean so maybe i i wrote a book so the book is the result of my intellectual creation so because i have written the book i being the author of of the book has to be given certain rights in the form of intellectual property rights so under the copyright act in india i get copyright over the book that i have written and when i say that i have got a copyright on my book it means that it means that i get the right to commercially exploit my work that is i can make make money out of my book that is i decide to give it to a publisher to publish my book and the publisher decides to give me a certain amount of money as royalty for the book so i can commercially exploit my work and ensure that nobody interferes with my rights so let's say somebody takes my book without my permission and tries to publish it or you know or commercially exploit my book without my permission so i get the right under the copyright law to file an infringement case against them so this is just a basic understanding of what is intellectual property rights so coming to what are the different kinds of intellectual property rights many of you might be aware about it but nevertheless i thought i will share at least the most important intellectual property rights under uh, the current regime that we have are patents which we are going to discuss today the second one is copyright so patents is given basically for inventions for scientific inventions then we have copyright copyright is a right which is given to literary work to dramatic work to music if let's say somebody has written uh, written you know somebody has created a music right so the composer of the music will get a copyright over his work then we have trademarks then we have geographical indications you know geographical indications is something that is quite in news these days there are a lot of products from assam which are geographical indications like uh, assam muga silk is a geographical indication assam orthodox tea is a geographical indication recently we have uh, johar rice as a geographical indication so geographical indications is another kind of intellectual property rights then we have industrial designs so you know a, a particular person has created a very unique design and the design can be applied in any article a design can be made by a designer for clothes or a design can be made by a uh, you know for a particular uh, for a particular car a car design so both comes within the intellectual property regime rights of industrial designs and then the sixth one we have layout design of semiconductor circuit and the last one we have what is known as trade this secrets or undisclosed information so under the current intellectual property regime that we have we can say that these are the kind of these are the types of intellectual property that exist moving on to what uh, to my topic today that is patents now the question is what are patents excuse me ma'am yes but your slide is not sliding uh my slides are not moving yeah okay give me a second is it moving now oh, are you in slide number 6 ma'am uh yes i am on slide number 6 absolutely now, now we are uh, visible at number 6 you can, you can see it right okay okay so basically uh the topic that i want to discuss today is on patents now the question is why is patent granted you know so patents as i told you earlier is given for scientific inventions uh, there is an example that i have cited let's say there is a person called sharp 
Now, what Sham has done is Sham has developed or created a new vaccine to cure a particular form of cancer. So, let's say Sham is a you know researcher uh, who has specialization in the pharmaceutical industry, and he is able to develop a, a vaccine to let's say to cure a particular form of cancer. Now, because this is a kind of scientific invention, Sham will get a patent over it, right? So, Sham's invention a Shams vaccine will be protected by the patent. Now, the thing is that what are the kind of rights that Sham will get under the patent law? The rights that Sham will get under the patent law is number one, for the next 20 years, no one can use the vaccine without his permission because this Sham is the inventor or the creator of this particular vaccine. So when a patent is granted, a patent is granted for 20 years. So it means that for the next 20 years, without the permission of Sham, no one can use the vaccine without his permission. And of course, secondly, the patent law provides him a forum to commercially exploit his creation. Let's say Sham is an independent researcher. You know, he is not associated, let's say, with a pharmaceutical company, but he has developed a medicine for curing a particular form of cancer. So let's say there are three pharmaceutical company who comes to Sham and tells him that you please license us this, uh, the, you know, the vaccine, the vaccine to us. We will commercially, you know, we will commercially, we will commercially, uh, you know, we will commercially exploit it. Now, let's say one pharmaceutical company says that I'll give you five crores for this. The other pharmaceutical company says, I'll give you 10 crores for it. And the other pharmaceutical company, let's say, I'll give you seven crores for it. Now, it is up to Sham because he's the patent owner to decide, you know, to which pharmaceutical company he wants to give away his rights, right? So nobody can force him and nobody without the permission of Sham can commercially use his vaccine in the market because that would be a patent infringement. Now, uh, there are certain other things that I wanted to discuss. That is, <clears throat> patent right is a kind of right which is granted only when it is registered as per the law. So let's say you have invented something and it's a scientific invention, but you have not registered it under the patent law. The registration of patent law I'm going to discuss today as well. So let's say I am the, I am the person who has developed a particular medicine. If I want a patent for it, I cannot just sit at home and think that, you know, I'll get a patent over it. What I have to do is that I have to fill up a form as per the patent law. Then I have to submit my form to the patent controller's office in India or whichever office, you know, office's jurisdiction I come to. If I'm from Guwahati, I have to submit it in the patent office in Calcutta. So then the patent office in Calcutta will process my application. And after examination and various other procedural matters, they will inform me whether the patent is given to me or not given to me. So what I want to mean, the first point in this slide means that you will be granted patent right only when you register it under the patent law. You have to file an application for it. You cannot just sit at home and just say that I have invented this thing, so I will be the patent owner. To be a patent owner, you have to apply for it. And the second point is the right is based on first come, first serve basis. So what is the meaning of it? The meaning of it is something like that. Let's say I and there's another person, let's say A. That person A and I, we are working on the same invention. Now, what has happened is I was not smart enough. And although I worked before him, I started the work before him, but I filed for the patent application after him, right? So a filed it first, I filed for the patent application data. So as per the patent law, it is the person A who will get the patent and I will not be given the patent because under the patent law, it is first come, first serve basis, right? So I hope this much is, uh, you know, you, you are able to understand this much. So I would like to move forward. Now coming to this question of uh, rights of patent holders, let's say you are a patent holder. What are the kind of rights that you get as a, uh, what are the kind of rights that you get as a patent owner? Now you have to understand, it's a little complicated. I will try to explain it to you later. There are two kinds of patents that you can have under the Indian current regime. 
And the two kinds of patents that you can have is number one, a product patent, and number two, a process patent, right? So let's first understand what is the difference between a product patent and a process patent. So we'll first discuss what is a process patent. Now, under a process patent, the patent is granted for a particular manufacturing process and not for the product itself. Any other person can produce the same product through some other process modifying the various parameters. Now, it seems a little complicated, but I will explain you with this simple case that we have under the patent law. Now, in this particular case of, uh, you know, the name of the case is uh, Lalubhai versus Shamalda Sankalchan's case. Now, in this particular case, there was a laboratory who was assigned by a company who did the business of selling almonds in the market. They somehow came to know that, you know, the consumers likes whitened almonds. The, if the almonds are white, you know, they, the, the consumer generally like the whitened almonds. They don't like, you know, the almonds which are brownish or dark brownish in color, right? Now, uh, the lab whom they approached, they experimented on how the elements can be whitened so that they are preferred by the consumers. I cannot tell you why consumers prefer white elements, but it so happened that the consumers prefer because people prefer weird things, right? So consumers prefer whitened elements. So this laboratory worked on it and they found out a way by which these elements can be whitened. And the process was that they used to, please look into the slide, so the process of whitening the almonds was that they use bleaching powder on the almonds along with sulfur dioxide and then treated them under a pressure uh, of 5 LBS per square inch in a closed chamber, which resulted in commercial results to effectively cater to demand for the white almonds. Now see, this is an entire process of how the almonds is whitened. They're using bleaching powder, they're using sulfur dioxide, and they are giving a particular pressure in a particular condition, five LVs per square inch in a closed chamber, right? So this entire process of whitening the almonds can be considered to be a process patent. Why? Because almond whitening by this process was not done by anyone before, was not invented by anyone before. This laboratory, after a lot of experiments, came to the result that this is the only way how you can whiten the almond without affecting the quality of the almond. And they filed a patent for it. They filed a process patent for it. So the, this is the process patent that, you, that we are using bleaching powder, sulfur dioxide under a particular pressure which of, of a particular temperature in a closed chamber. So this is the process patent. Now what process patent means is that other sellers of almond can also whiten almonds and sell it in the market. There's no absolute problem. You can sell whitened almonds in the market, but what you cannot do is that you cannot use this exact same process because it is patented. So you cannot, for whitening the almond, because this is patented by the first company, that is Lalubhai's company, so you cannot whiten the almonds by mixing bleaching powder and sulfur dioxide and then treating them under a pressure of five elvis per square inch in a closed chamber. Because this process of whitening the almonds is patented by this particular company. Right. You can use other process of, you know, you can use other process for whitening elements, but this process, because it is patented, you cannot use it. So going back to the previous slide, under a process patent, the patent is granted for a particular manufacturing process and not for the product itself. Please pay importance to the sentence. It means that the patent is granted just for the manufacturing process, the manufacturing process of whitening elements I just told you, and not for the product itself. Here, almond itself is not patented, but how the elements is whitened is what is patented. So any other person can produce the same product. That is, any other person or any other company can produce the same white elements through some other process modifying the various parameters. Right. So this is what is process patent. Now coming to what is product patent. Now, in case of product patent, 
what happens is that it is an exclusive right given to the original inventor of a product this means that no other manufacturer can provide the same products to the same or any other process so basically if let's say a country is following a product patent system so product patent system would be something like uh, somebody has developed a vaccine let's say for one particular kind of leukemia blood cancer so because they have got a patent on the product itself for treating that particular form of cancer so no other pharmaceutical company now can create a vaccine or a product similar to what the other person has created so trying to understand the whitening element case here had india follow if india followed a product patent system it means that nobody can sell whitened elements except the lalubhai's company right but if a country is following a pro pro process patent system it means that other companies can also sell a uh, you know whitened elements but they have to use a different process of how they are whitening the elements now the second point in this slide says whether india follows a patent uh, india follows a product patent system or a process patent system now you have to understand that for poor countries of the world for the developing countries of the world we are the global south we come in the uh, we come amongst the poor countries of the world so you have to understand that process patent is always beneficial for the poor countries why let's say there is a medicine which cures a particular rare kind of disease right now if there is a patent if there is a product patent it means that no other pharmaceutical company can create the same medicine for treating the drugs so it means that if you are having that sickness it is only the patented medicine that you have to have because there is no other medicine which is which will be which will be invented or made available to you because of the patent regime but if a country if a poor country follows a process patent system what is beneficial is that that you know other pharmaceutical companies can also make medicines to treat that particular form of cancer you know not that not the same medicine as company number 1 has produced but company number 2 or company number 3 can produce a similar medicine through an entirely different process so process patent is always good or beneficial for the poor countries but you have to understand that this intellectual property rights that we have the patent regime that we have so we have because these were these laws were made because the rich countries of the world wanted because america wanted these laws because europe wanted these laws because they have all these big pharmaceutical companies this big multinational companies so they forced all the countries of the world including the poor countries of the world that you have to mandatorily follow a product patent system which means that if pharmaceutical company number 1 is producing this particular medicine to treat a rare disease nobody else in the world gets a right to make another medicine for treating the same disease which is very problematic right but india was a signatory india was forced to sign a trips agreement in 1994 and because india was forced to sign the trips agreement in 1994 they had to succumb to the pressure they had to succumb to the pressure of the rich countries of the world and in 2005 in order to comply with the wto trips provision india had to change from a process patent regime to a product patent regime right it is very sad but india had no other option but to shift from a process patent system to a product patent system is it clear everyone so i hope everything is properly visible and all yes can i continue further yes yes ma'am okay okay so now we have to understand what is patentable what is not patentable and let's say you are an inventor you are a you are a science student you know and tomorrow you are going to be a researcher you are going to be a scientist so if you are you know creating an invention which i'm sure many of you will do so the question here is that uh, how will you patent it or what has to be there in your invention so that your invention can be patented right so we have to understand the conditions for granting of patents 
Now the first point is that patents are granted only for inventions. There are three conditions to be fulfilled for an invention to be patented. The first condition is that the invention has to be novel. That is the invention has to be new. The second one is that the invention should involve an inventive step. And the third point is that it must be capable of industrial application. So we need to understand what this novel mean? What does inventive step mean? What does industrial application means? Now, uh, the first criteria, let's say I am applying for a patent. The patent office is saying or asking me whether your patent in patented invention fulfills this criteria. So the first criteria is that of novelty. That is whether my patent is new or not. Is it something old? If it is something old, which is already known by the people, already known by the society, I will not be given a patent. Only when my patent is on a particular topic, which is new, on an area which is new, then only I'll be given a patent. So basically to understand this concept of whether my patent is novel or not, whether my patent is new or not, the questions which we'll be looking into is what is the invention. So first they will ask me, what is the scientific invention that you want a patent on? So I say, let's say a machinery. So I say this is the new kind of machinery, you know, uh, by which, you know, you can put vegetables here, you can keep vegetables here. And let's say, you know, uh, the veg so uh, the vegetables will not get spoiled, let's say for um, three years. So just a hypothetical example, just an imaginary example. So something like that, right? So they will, the patent office will first look into, okay, so this is the machine that you want a patent on. Then they will look into, then they will look into before me, what was there? What, what, was there any kind of such invention which was close to me? Because you have to understand that refrigerator or cold storage is something which is already there in the society. So the patent authority will look into already there are, you know, big, uh, you know, different kind of refrigerators. There is already a lot of machineries for uh, storing the fruits and vegetables for a very long time. So they will look into that since there are already such kind of refrigerators or cold storing machines already in existence in the society. So they will look into that if my machine has to be given a patent, what is the newness in this? What is new about my machine? So only when there will be something new in my machine, which was not there, let's say in the earlier refrigerators, in the earlier fridge, or in the earlier cold storage, uh, you know, equipments, only then I'll be given a patent. But if my machine has nothing new, but it is very simple, it, it is just like the earlier fridge, which was there, earlier cold storage equipment, which was there, then they will not give me patent because saying that this particular kind of fridge or this particular kind of, you know, cold, uh, you know, storage equipment is already there in the society. So this is the first thing that the patent office will do whenever they have to figure out whether they have to give a patent or not, whether the test or the condition of novelty is met or not. So this is what is novelty. Now, when they are going to look into the question of prior art, that is when the patent office is looking into whether my patent is new or not, they will do, they will look into what is there before my invention in the society. So what was, what is there before my patent was filed in the patent office, which, me, which means that they will look into whether earlier in the public, in the society, a similar kind of machine was there, right? And while you know, doing an investigation, whether something like this was already there in the society, these are the factors they will remember. The first thing is that when they are going to do an investigation, whether a machine like me is already there in the society, they will not only look into in India, in India, whether a similar kind of medicine is there, but they will also look into all the countries in the world. They will also look into America. They will look into Europe. They will look into Australia. They will look in, in Japan. So whether in these other countries also a similar kind of machine that I am trying to get a patent on is there or not. So if anywhere in the world, a similar kind of machine that I have, you know, tried to invent is there, they will say that your invention is not new or it is not novel. So we will not grant you the patent.
right? The second one is that no limits on mode of disclosure. So when they're doing the investigation, they will look into everything. They will look into uh, the patents also, if earlier similar kind of patent is granted. You know, they will look into whether the, in, in some shops, a similar kind of machine is put for sale. They will also look into exhibitions in certain kind of exhibitions if a machine like this is displayed. So everything they will investigate. The third one is potential rather than actual disclosure. Now, let's say, there is somebody, you know, who has, uh, you know, come up or experimented with a similar kind of machine that I want to patent on. And that person, let's say, has written an article and that article, he has written it in his own website. You know, in his own website, he has written this about this particular machine, how he made the entire machine, etc., etc. So the entire description of how he manufactured the machine, what can be the use of the machine is properly written down in the website. Now, in that context, what happens is that the patent office, while investigating whether my patent is new or not, or whether a patent should be granted to me or not, will look into this particular article also in the website. And let's say I tell him, I tell the patent office that although this article was written by this particular person, but it was not seen by anyone because nobody knows this website of this particular person. He has written it, that's fine, but no one has seen it ever. Under the third point, the patent office will tell me that it is not necessary that anybody has seen it. But the question is that if anybody wants to go to his particular website and want to see this or read this article, can they see or read this article or not? And the answer is yes. If somebody particularly wants to go to his article, uh, website and read this article, they can do it. Whether they have actually done it is not important. Just the fact that anybody can access it if they want to is sufficient for denying me the registration of the patent. The fourth point is the, uh, so the fourth point is not really necessary. So these are the factors that are very important to remember when the patent office is looking into whether my patent is new or not in order to decide whether patent should be granted to me or not. Okay, the next step, if you remember, I told you about three things the patent has to have in order to, you know, uh, get the patent. The patent has to be novel, the patent should involve an inventive step, and the patent must be capable of industrial application. So can you see slide number 15? Is slide number 15 uh, visible to you? Yes, ma'am. OK, so my uh, slides are moving properly, right? Yes. So my slides are moving properly, right? Yes, ma'am. OK. So uh, the, coming to the question of inventive step, what does inventive step actually mean? Now, uh, inventive step and invention is said to involve inventive step. It is not obvious if it is not obvious to a person skilled in the art. It ensures that only meritorious inventions get patent. Now, the question is, what does it actually mean? I will explain it to you with the help of this particular case, this particular example. Now, there was a case which was filed, you know, there was a case which was filed in India. On the right hand side, do you see this bamboo, uh, bamboo basket, right? You see this bamboo basket? Have you seen similar kind of bamboo baskets before? Yes or no? Yes, right? So you have seen the bamboo basket before. Now, there was a company which manufactured this red color plastic basket, red color plastic basket and they said that because this is something new you know they wanted to have a patent on it because they said that you know uh, this is not this is this involves an inventive step because it is not obvious you know earlier uh, just the bamboo baskets were there now because we have not used bamboo but you have, we have used a more durable product which will not be spoiled so easily we have used plastic and because in case of this bamboo baskets, uh, ropes are used in order to hang it, you know, in our case, we have used nylon straps to, you know, to strap it. So because it is something new or this is something novel, we need a patent over it, right? However, in this particular case, in the Dhanpat Sage case, it was said, so they actually, uh, the, the 
So what basically happened in this particular case was this particular case, Dhanpat say they asked for a patent on it and uh, and they were granted a patent for it. Now there's Nilkamal Plastics who also came up with similar kind of baskets, this similar kind of baskets and Dhanpat Seth's company filed a case against Nilkamal Plastics company saying that this is our patent and because we have get, got a patent over it, you know, we have got a patent over it, you have no right whatsoever to use this plastic, uh, plastic baskets and sell it in the market. Now Nilkamal Plastics company filed another case in the uh, in the court saying that this patent which was granted to Dhanpat Seth's company is wrong because this particular uh, this particular plastic basket is neither new nor it involves any inventive step because this is for inventive step it has to be non obvious right it means that somebody who is skilled or somebody who has knowledge about it in the society it should not be something which is obvious uh, obvious to two people in the society, right? So in this particular case, the plaintiff said that uh, that in in case of our plastic baskets, they submitted that it should actually have a patent because they said that it is an invention, and they said that although traditional baskets, which in Himachal Pradesh was called kilta, so they said that traditional plastic uh, bamboo baskets were there. We agree, but what we have done is improvement on the product. What we have done is instead of using bamboo, which gets spoiled very easily, we have used plastic, right? And in the traditional kilta, the traditional bamboo baskets, they use ropes, you know. Uh, but in, in our plastic baskets, we are using adjustable nylon straps. And they're saying that because we are using plastic and adjustable nylon straps, it has an inventive step and it amounts to an invention. However, the court did not agree with it. The court said that the process of making traditional items out of polymers, that is plastic, is a well-known and well-established process. The court can take judicial notice of the fact that much prior to the device being manufactured by the plaintiff, traditional items made of woods, steel, brass, leather, and other natural materials have been replaced by plastic. So therefore the court said, in our opinion, the mere fact that the device is made of plastic instead of bamboo is not an inventive step involving any novelty. Now, this is very interesting. So the, what is the court trying to say? The court is saying that, you know, replacing wood, replacing brass metal, replacing ceramics with plastic is not something, uh, something new. I mean, see, traditionally, we never used to use plastic plates to eat our food. Traditionally, we used to use bell metals or we used to use steel, etc., etc. But because, you know, steel utensils are very expensive, you know, uh, the bell metal utensils, the ka, the ka uh, basson that we say in Assamese, you know, they're expensive, right? It is very difficult to maintain. So the easy, easy way out was what? The easy way out was that you come up with plastic plates, which will not break easily. And you can easily, you know, serve food and eat food in the plastic plates. So the court said that in order to, you know, in order to be eligible under the new criteria, the novelty criteria, the inventive step criteria, you need to come up with something which the other people may have never thought about it. But the question is that replacing things Re replacing traditional things with plastic is not something which involves a lot of, you know, geniusness. This is something very obvious. Everything that we have seen today can is are all made in plastics. Everything is in plastics. Traditional bottles, you know, we used to have traditional, let's say, copper bottles. We have plastic bottles now. Traditionally, we had you we used to let's say have steel mugs. Now we have plastic mugs. Traditionally, there used to be this earthen pots, earthen pots to store water. Now we have plastic filters. So everything is, you know, easily, everything that we know now is made of plastic. So the court said this, where is the question of inventive step? Where is the question of newness here? Because we already know that traditional my items, which was made of wood, steel, brass, leather, are all replaced by plastics now. So they said that Dhanpat Seth's company, what they have done is they have just, they have just used this traditional bamboo uh, basket 
and they have just made a plastic basket out of it. It does not need any kind of creativity or geniusness to do that. It is something which is obvious to anybody to replace bamboo with plastics. And hence, they said that this particular patent should not be granted because there is no inventive step criteria met here. OK, now moving on. So just to summarize, just to summarize, in order to qualify as an invention, a product has to satisfy the following test. Number one, the scientific invention has to be new. Number two, the scientific invention must be capable of being made or used in an industry. Number three, it must be an invention which, which should not be obvious to anybody. Not obvious means that there has to be certain creativity or geniusness involved there. And it should entail a technical advance over uh, existing knowledge or has a economic significance. So these are the parameters in order to qualify as an invention. And last criteria to be patentable is that it has to be a, uh, of industrial application. So only those patented invention, only those patented invention which can, which can be used in the industry, which has industrial application, only those kind of scientific inventions will be given a patent, right? Can we move forward? So moving forward, we need to understand what is the procedure for an ordinary patent application in India. Now, the first thing is that the filing of the application. So under the ordinary patent application procedure in India, the first thing is that who can file for the patent and where will they file for the patent? Now, the first point is that every patent shall be filed in appropriate office based on residence or principal place of business. Let's say I sitting in Guwahati today, I have invented something which can be patented. So the first thing would be that I will file for the patent by, uh, you know, by writing an application to the appropriate office. So in case of Guwahati, the appropriate patent office would be the patent office in Calcutta. And of course, let's say somebody is creating something in Delhi. So the appropriate office for that particular person to file for the patent application will be in Delhi. The second provision is, Procedure of filing an application, examination and incidental matters are contained in the patent rules. Forms are given in second schedule and fees as prescribed in the first schedule to the rules. So obviously of patent filing, although I'm telling it very theoretically here, but patent filing is a very technical process, you know, just you know, hiring a lawyer would not be sufficient in order to file a patent because you have to understand that science and law works hand in hand in case of patent filing. So when you're filing for a patent, not only would you, would you require somebody with a legal expertise, but you would also require somebody with a scientific background, you know, depending on what kind of patent you have. Is it a patent on a machine? Is it a patent on a medicine? Depending on whatever field it is, you would need a particular a specialized person from that particular field who will file that specification. I'm going to discuss what is specification. That's a very important part of the patent filing. I think you have a specific session today after lunch on patent filing. So I think uh, the resource person will be explaining much, you know, a lot about patent filing there. So you will need an expertise of a lawyer as well as, uh, you know, person who are specialized in the patent area that you want to file in. So it will be a combined effort for you to, you know, so it will be a combined effort of different specialized person in order to file a patent. Now, the third po point is that every application for a patent shall be for one invention only. So you cannot find one application and let's say you have three inventions. You say that, you know, it will be less fees for me. So in one application, I'll file for three inventions. So it is not permitted. So every application for patent shall be just for one invention. And of course, every patent application shall be accompanied by a provisional or a complete specification. So this is very important that a patent application has to come with a provisional or complete specification. So that brings us to the question of what is the meaning of this word specification? Now see, what is the purpose of patent? The purpose of patent is to give certain rights, to give certain rights in the form of rewards to a person 
who has put in a lot of time, a lot of labor, a lot of creativity in order to create an invention, let's say a medicine or a machinery, which at the end of the day is going to help human, human, human beings, right? So it is very, very important that, you know, just, 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 so it is very, very important that, uh, that this specification is filed along with the patent application. So you have to remember, just, just give me a second. There's a slight bit of disturbance. Just give me a second. Yeah, I'm extremely sorry. So uh, it is very, very important that when you're filing for a patent application, it has to be accompanied by a professional or special complete specification. Now you have to understand that we grant a patent that is a kind of big right we are giving, a monopoly right that we are giving to a particular person who is creating the invention. So you have to understand when the law is giving you a monopoly right, you know, so you have to also give it back to the society. So the question is that what will you give it back to the society? Because the society for 20 years will ensure that your rights are not violated. And if your rights are violated, the law will provide you remedies for the same, right? So the giving back to the society concept is in the form of specification. Now, the specification is a document which is compulsory or mandatory in a patent application. And the specification is a technical legal document which contains full scientific details of the invention and claims to the patent right. Now, see, uh, a patent is always given to an invention. An invention is something complicated, right? Suppose I have invented a machine so how i have invented the machine from step one to the final step only i know right so when i'm filing for the patent application the patent law wants that in my patent application i mention exactly what were the different steps involved in my making of that particular machinery so whatever creativity i have put in whatever intellectual creativity i have put in in the different stages of making the machine that I have to write it down very, very properly. Why? Why? Because when my patent is will end, this document will be in the public domain. This will be open to the society. And anybody can read this specification and can make a duplicate machine just like me, right? So for 20 years, nobody can make the same machine which I have made because I have got a patent over it. But you have to remember that after the 20 years time period is over, because I have in the specification mentioned the different stages of my patent, patent uh, invention, patented invention, anybody can look into this specification and can easily make a duplicate of my machine. So the specification's purpose is that after the patent is over, it is going to serve the society. It is going, going to serve the people who wants to, you know, utilize or manufacture a similar kind of machine than mine. I'll give you a simple example. In early 2000, you must have seen that a computer, those big computers with very less memory, used to cost around 1 lakh rupees. So people, you know, if you're not aware, uh, you know, around 2000, 2001, 2002, all these big, you know, bulky computers used to be very, very expensive and it has very less memory or very less capacity than what we have today. So the question is, and 1 lakh rupees at, 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 in 2000, 2002 was a huge sum of money, right? So you have to understand that today, sitting in 2022, right, when everything has become expensive, let's say food items have become very expensive, rice, let's say, you know, in 2002, let's say was, you know, 20 rupees kilo. So the same rice today maybe is 100 rupees kilo, just an example I'm giving. But you see that in case of computers and all, 
the same computers with such less memory, such less capacity was one lakh rupees. And in 2022, after 20 years, you know, you get a better machine, a better machinery with a better capacity, let's say for 50,000 rupees, right? So you have to try to answer the question, how does this happen when everything has become so expensive in 20 years? Why is the cost of the computers become very less? So you have to understand because at that point of time, time in 2000, 2002, uh, the patent, there was patent on these machineries. So when you have patent on these machineries, without the permission of the patent holders, others cannot replicate the machine, the others cannot make the machines. So if the a particular company wants to charge one lakh rupees, you will not get any other substitute in the market because there's a patent over it. But let's say after 20 years time period is over, when the patented invention comes to the public domain, when the specification comes to the public domain, by looking into your specification, any other company can easily make another computer. And you know, another, you know, part of the, um, the the market dynamics that when there are more producers of the same product, the prices always comes less. So now from being one single patent holder who was making a computer, after the patent is over, now there are 10,000 companies who are manufacturing computers. So when these 10,000 companies are now making manufacture, um, computers, so it is but obvious that the prices of these computers will come down. Also, when, you know, there is competition in the market, then, you know, there are a lot of other parameters which works for the advantage of the consumers. So, uh, let's say there are 10,000 computer companies who are selling you the exact same computer. So, on what ground will you buy a, com a computer? So, I as a con consumer now would want to buy only something which is better quality. So, for 50,000 rupees, if I'm getting more memory, if I'm getting better features in my computer, that computer I'll buy for 50,000 rupees rather than the other computer, which is for 50,000 rupees, you know, but which has less, less features or which has less memory. So you have to understand that till the time patent is there, a thing can be very, very expensive. But after the patent is over, the patent of 20 years is over because this specification is made public and anybody can use this specification and can replicate or duplicate the patented invention, you will generally see that the price of the patented products will always become less. So this is the importance of specification. Specification under the patent filing is very, very important because it is a very important tool to serve the public interest, to serve the interest of the people in the society. Now, after that, after you file the application as per requirement, the application is filed, you're filing the specification also, then the patent office will publish your patent application. So basically in their official website, official journal, they will publish that this particular patent has been applied by me. Let's say they will, uh, they say that this particular person has applied for this particular patent. So they will publish it. Now the question is that why do they publish it? Why do they publish it even before my patent is granted when I have applied for the patent? The first thing they want is that if there is any person, please read the last point, if there is any person or the government who wants to challenge the application of grant of patent, who has a problem or objection that I should not be granted on this, this particular patent, the patent is published so that the members of the society can object to the filing of the patent, right? So obviously the members of the society would not know that I have filed for the patent until and unless the patent office makes it known by publication that this particular person has filed for this particular patent, right? So this is the purpose of publication of patent application. Now, the next stage is examination of patent. So after the patent application is filed, the applicant that is suppose I'm filing, then I will request for examination that kindly, I will request the patent office that kindly examine my patent and tell me whether my patent can, whether my invention can be patented or it cannot be patented. However, the second point requirement is important that the patent office will not examine my patent unless it is published by them and a request for examination is filed. So let's say I have filed for the application and I sleep over it. I don't, uh, you know, uh, apply for a patent examination. My patent examination is not published. So 
you know the patent office will not examine whether my patent should be granted or not so i as the applicant has to make this effort to ask the patent authorities to publish my patent then i have to give a request for them to examine my patent so this is the next stage now coming to the last stage that is registration of patent so under the last point registration of patent it provides it's very simple so the patent office will examine whether my the patentable criteria are met or not and if they feel that the patentable criteria are met then they will register my patent and if my patent is registered they will issue me a certificate for the patent registration and give it to me right so in just this is how the entire patent application process happens first you file for the patent along with the specification then the patent authorities will publish your patent so that if anybody has a problem they can object to it then there's an examination of patent head and finally the question of registration or not registration of the patent i have not dwelled much into it because i have seen that you have a special session today which is about patent filing okay now coming to the last part of my presentation that is inventions which are not patentable now section 3 of the patent law is very important what are the inventions that cannot be patented at all right so that is something that we need to know now the first provision says an invention which is frivolous and against well established nature law principles cannot be patented the second one is that an invention the primary purpose of which is just commercial exploitation and against public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice or serious uh, severe ill effects to human beings animals plant life health or environment will not be patented so you know we have issues of human cloning you know animal cloning so these are controversial because because there is section 3b because under section 3b we don't know whether human clone human cloning are not considered to be you know uh, uh, it's not considered to be moral it's considered to be immoral right so that is the reason why uh, uh, human cloning is such a uh, such a debatable area right so under section 3b human cloning human clones will not be patented in india because it is against morality the third point c point number c so the mere discovery of a scientific principle is not is not patentable so if you can see there's a case in america vitamin technologies versus wisconsin alumni it was said that somebody tried to patent you know ultraviolet rays so they said ultraviolet rays is something which is a property of entire mankind it will be a monstrous thing it will be an evil thing if the if the energy could be made the subject of patent or monopoly right so this is what is so uh, you know discovery just the discovery of a scientific principle will not be patented right now point number d uh, 3d is very very important it says the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance will not be patented now i want to put in a little bit of time in order to understand what is 3d because in the indian context you have to understand that 3d has been a lot in discussion because of a very famous case known as the novartis ag versus union of india case right so i want to discuss a few minutes on this particular very very important landmark decision which was given by the supreme court of india now in this particular case the novartis ag is a pharmaceutical company it is a switzerland based pharmaceutical company and novartis filed an application before the chennai patent office for a medicine known as glivac uh, which could treat uh, leukemia a, a particular form of blood cancer now uh, they already had a medicine called glivac which they had a patent on now what they have done is that uh, they have now filed for another application saying that we have modified the earlier medicine we have brought in changes in the earlier medicine now because this is a new version of the old medicine we want a new patent for it right now uh, the newer version if you look into point number 2 they're saying that the newer version has more beneficial flow properties better thermodynamic stability etc etc than the earlier form now i'll explain it to you what does it actually mean now they were saying that the new medicine is better the modified medicine is better because they said that the earlier medicine you could not store it for a longer duration you know the 
previous medicine would get very spoiled. You would get spoiled if you keep it for a longer duration. But the new version of the medicine that we have brought in, it is better because, you know, it absorbs less moisture from the air. You know, you can store it for a longer duration. And now because this modified version is better, we need a new patent for it. The assistant controller of patent, an official in the Chennai Patent Office, rejected the application under Section 3D. Now, Section 3D, they said that mere discovery of a new form which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy will not be patented. So basically, uh, the assistant controller of patent said that we cannot allow this particular patent because it is it is just a newer form of already what is known, you know, newer form of, of what is already known, which is not resulting in the efficiency of the medicine. Hence, we cannot patent it. Now, because they were unhappy, this pharmaceutical company was unhappy with the decision, they make an, made an appeal to the IPAP, that is Intellectual Property Appellate Board. And the Appellate Board also said that we cannot give you a patent because, because Section 3D of the Patent Act is there. They were they further made an appeal from the appellate board to the Supreme Court of India. And they said that, you know, what uh, the decisions which was given by the Chennai Patent Office and the Intellectual Property Appellate Board is completely wrong. Now, we have to look into what did the Supreme Court say. Now, in the case, the Supreme Court said that in case of an ordinary patent, the criteria of patentability is that it has to be new, it has to involve in the inventive step, and it needs to have industrial application. So if these three conditions are met, a patent will be granted in case of an ordinary patent registration. However, they said that the Section 3D, which was inserted in India very recently, not very recently, but, you know, when the Novartis case happened, in, they said it very recently in 2005, which says that in case of pharmaceutical company, we would have another qualifying standard. So not only it has to be new inventive step and industrial application, but we also want to have another criteria for pharmaceutical products, right? Now, the reason is that why a qualifying, another qualifying criteria was required for medicines. It's very important for us to understand. Now, you have to understand that these patented companies, uh, these patented companies are very clever companies, right? And they have very shrewd lawyers who helps them, you know, in order to keep their patents. Now, as I told you earlier, a patent is granted for 20 years. Let's say Novartis created this medicine, they got a patent over it, and let's say they were earning 100 crores every year because of this particular medicine, Glivec, right? Now, let's say they patented this medicine, just an example I'm giving you, they patented this medicine in 1983, right? So, 1983, since they patented it, they'll get the patent for 20 years. So, in 2003, the patent will be over. So after 2003, other pharmaceutical med companies can also make the same medicine, Glivec, put it in the market, and obviously, Glive, uh, Novartis, the pharmaceutical company, will not be able to make so much of profits. Now, when they start approaching 2003, the 20 years term is going to be over, they become very scared that now this, let's say, 100 crores every year, where, where is it going to come? It's not going to come. The others are going to use our products. So what these companies, they start doing is three, four years before the patent gets over. So 2003, let's say the patent is going to get over. From 2000, 1999, 2000, they'll start a lot of work in order to bring certain small changes in the medicine. Small changes, which does not actually affect or change the medicine as such, but on papers that they can show that it's a new medicine, it's a modified medicine. So they will you know, do certain experiments in order to bring a newer form of medicines. And this newer form of medicines, they will file another patent before 2003. And if they are granted the patent, which it means that for till 2023, no one can touch their medicine again. So this is a kind of very, uh, this is the kind of clever trick which is played by most multinational corporations so that their patent remains forever. In, uh, uh, in, you know, uh, famously, this, exp this, is, this process is called evergreening of patent, which is considered to be an abusive practice of the patent owners, by the patent owners. Now, in this particular case, 
if we come back to the slide here, what the Supreme Court is saying is that in case of medicines, because med medicines is a very, very sensitive subject matter be because it affects the public health, right? So they said that we not only need to meet the criteria of novelty, inventive step and industrial application, but we also have to see that for medicines, so that evergreening of patents, abuse of patents doesn't happen, you know, repetitive patents doesn't happen. We need to put a qualifying standard specifically for chemical substances and pharmaceutical products. And so they said that, and so in order to have a special uh, qualifying standard, they brought in Section 3D of the Patent Act. So Section 3D of the Patent Act was brought in just to uh, see that the abusive, the abusive practice doesn't happen. So Section 3D says, the mere discovery of a known form of a known substance, which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance, will not be patented. Now, the question is that here a very important word is used, that is the word efficacy. So we need to understand what is the meaning of the word efficacy. Now, in case of efficacy, the Supreme Court said that for medicines, the word efficacy would mean therapeutic efficacy. What does it mean? The, it means that, let's say, coming to the first slide again, the Glivec medicine, the old Glivec medicine used alpha form of a chemical known as imatinib mesylite. So alpha form or the base form was used, right? So when people were having this particular medicine while having blood cancer, there was a 60% chance of their getting recovered, right? just 60% chance of getting recovered, 40% chance they, they will not recover. Now, the Supreme Court is saying that for the new version of the same medicine that you have brought in, we will give you a patent only if it leads to therapeutic efficacy. So the Supreme Court is saying that from this new version of the medicine, your therapeutic efficacy standard will be met only when Let's say after having the new version of the medicine, from 60%, the chances of the patients to recover goes up to 80%. So when you were having the older version of the medicine, 60% chance of recovery. Now you're having the newer version of the medicine. We will grant you a patent only if the potentiality of a consumer to uh, of a patient to get recovered becomes more. From 60%, let's say now 80% chance of recovery. Right, so that is when we will grant a patent on a medicine, on a newer medicine or a new modified form of medicine. Now, the Supreme Court said that the Novartis company has said that this modified medicine has nothing to do about curing the person. So, Novartis is only saying that the newer version of the medicine is better because it absorbs less moisture from the air. You can store it, let's say earlier you could store it for one month, you could now store it for two months. But the Supreme Court is saying that we, are, we, we don't look into the physical properties. How long you can store it is not important from the angle of efficacy. How, how much moisture it absorbs from the air, it's not the question that we are going to look into from the angle of efficacy. So from the angle of efficacy, what we need to know is the newer form of medicine that you, has, you have brought in, how much better the chances of the patient it is now when they eat, when they're consuming the new form of the medicine. And the answer to it was that if there was a 60% chance of getting cured under the previous old version of the medicine, the chance of, you know, the chance of getting cured under the new form of the medicine was also 60%. So from the patient's angle, there was, there was nothing better. They, the chances of getting recovered remained at 60% only. What became modified was the physical properties like storage, you know, or moisture from the air, which the Supreme Court said is not it does not, it is not efficacy, it is not therapeutic efficacy. And because it is not therapeutic efficacy, it is it comes under section 3D. And they told Novartis that this newer form of medicine that you are trying to patent, we cannot grant you a patent over it. Right. So this is something that I wanted to share with you because this is a very, very important case. So this is section 3D. 
The next one is that uh, a method of agriculture or horticulture is something which will not be patented. So let's say there is a, there is jhum cultivation, there is some other kind of cultivation, there's a new form of agriculture which has come in. So those will not be patented. The next one is I, any process for medical surgical process will not be patented. So let's say, you know, we have laparoscopy surgery. So for let's say gallbladder or appendix earlier, you know, there used to be an open surgery, right? When there was no laparoscopic surgery. Let us think about a time when there was just an open surgery for gallbladder or appendix, there was no laparoscopy surgery. So somebody invented the laparoscopy surgery and they wanted a patent over it. But under this provision, the first provision, any process for medical or therapeutic treatment will not be patented. So the laparoscopy surgery, because it's a surgical method, uh, it will not be patented, right? The next one is plants and animals other than microorganisms will not be patented. So you, you, grew, you grow a new hybrid plant, right? So that hybrid plant cannot be patented. You may have other forms of protection. Like in India, we have the plant variety protection. So under that, it can come, but it will not be patented under the patent law. Now, mathematical or business method or computer program is not patented because in India, computer programs come under the copyright law. Then literary, dramatic, musical, artistic work are not patented because as I told you, literary work, dramatic work, musical work, artistic work are all subject matters of copyright. Now, uh, there's something that I wanted to discuss, which is very, very important. An invention which in effect is traditional knowledge is not patented. So traditional knowledge is a knowledge which is the knowledge of a particular community and which has been passed generation to generation, uh, you know, orally. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, let's say in India, somebody gets a wound, you know, somebody gets hurt. So along with the other medicines, we always give turmeric, you know, turmeric, uh, we mix turmeric in milk so that the healing happens quickly, right? So this is not something, the use of turmeric, let's say, is not something which is taught to us in the schools or we have read it. But this is just a traditional knowledge that is probably passed to us by our parents, to our parents by their, by their parents, right? So if somebody, let's say, because turmeric has some healing elements, it can cure people if they're hurt or they have some, some kind of a problem. Or let's say neem. Neem has, you know, some properties. If somebody has a skin problem, so you can, you know, bathe with neem or you can consume uh, neem-based drinks, you know, it will help you in that particular process. So these are things which are part of our traditional knowledge. Now, what has happened in the past is that there are many Indian based scientists and researchers who have gone to foreign countries and because they were, they were Indian origin, they knew about these healing properties of neem or healing properties of turmeric. Right. So what they tried doing in the foreign country was that they tried to patent the name and they tried to patent the turmeric, saying that this is the healing property of neem, you know, and this is the healing property of turmeric. Uh, we have come to know about these properties. So if haldi powder, you know, is uh, mixed in this much milk, so it will cure you of this. If neem uh, drink is made this much quantity and you consume it with water every day, with lukewarm water every day, so your skin problems will be gotten rid of. You know, so they tried to patent it. However, there was a lot of hue and cry. And specifically from government of India, there were a lot of opposition filed against this patent, which were happening in uh, most mostly in the European Patent Office. And the Indian government of India said that you cannot allow patent of turmeric, you cannot allow patent of neem, because this is part of our traditional knowledge. The Indian society as part of the traditional knowledge has been using turmeric for healing purpose, using neem for healing skin related problems. So they said that you cannot allow a patent for it, right? So the patent office, uh, so the European patent office, because of all the evidences that were given by the government of India, had to cancel all the patents that they give, gave for neem patent or for turmeric patent. So what I want to say that the last point before I end my presentation is that under section 3P, it is very clearly mentioned under the Indian laws that an invention which is nothing but a traditional knowledge cannot be patented in India, right? So with this, I want to complete my presentation. I have intentionally kept the presentation till 11.15 so that we have time to have discussions, if any. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, 
if anybody has any queries, you can ask. I just want to want to uh, ask one point. I yes, could not yes. uh, concentrate on the later part. I am a director school of technology, Assam Dambasco University. Good morning, uh, sir. In the first part, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Uh, that uh, wa your examples are very, 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 very nice, very impressive. Actually, everybody would un understand the whole concept by virtue of these examples. Very uh, important examples. But uh, suppose uh, regarding the widening of element, mm. there is a, a process, the so process is patented and others cannot use. How much the, but some, if somebody modifies, mm. then it can, be, it can be put patented. So if can the, in that case, the bleaching powder and these two components remain same, only the pressure or temperature is changed. That is only minor modification. Can it be uh, considered uh, as a new new thing? Yes. Can it be patented separately? A very yes. minor change. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, the whole criteria of uh, non-obviousness, which I discussed, the inventive step, which I discussed, is also very important in this regard. Uh, let's say, sir, uh, in this particular case of Lalubai, Chakubai that I was talking about, is this exactly what you have questioned? What the other company did yes. was, the other company did was exactly this. So they use sulfur dioxide and they use bleaching powder, but the temperature which they use, they slightly modified it. Yes. This is what they exactly did. But the patent authority said that no. At the end of the day, you are putting pressure. You're putting you're putting it in a heated environment, in a hot environment, and you're putting pressure. So what is the difference? Just you are just by varying the temperature, you are not creating or including certain creativity or certain inventive step. So for you to be able to do this, you cannot use something obvious. Just slightly changing the temperature is not sufficient. The, the process has to be very different from what is already registered. It has to be significantly different from what is registered. So in the Lalubai Chakubai case, they said that this minor modification will not allow you. We will not allow you because there's a process patent over it. It has to be a significant modified process. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, this is Arupurva. Uh, I have one uh, basic question actually. Yes, sir. Uh, so my question is, I have an idea about a product, mm -hmm. but I haven't built the prototype. You I have may, not built the, sir? I have not built the product yet. I have not okay. built a prototype of the product. I just have the idea. Right, sir. Uh, can I apply for patent based on just the idea? If I... Suppose I will develop the pet, uh, product in the next one year. Hmm. So uh, if you remember, uh, I think it's a very important question. It's a general question, but I think it is important for a lot of people to understand. So when I was talking about the patent application process, I was again and again harping on something which is known as specification. Right, sir? Specification. And I mentioned that either a provisional or a complete specification has to be provided. And the specification is what, sir, is that it is the various stages of making the patented invention. So let's say so if your product is just an idea and you do not actually have the, you know, the steps in mind properly, you cannot file this provisional specification. You can't, cannot file for the patent application. So something just in thought is not sufficient. It can be provisional. Let's say you're working on it, you know, but you fear that somebody else is also working on it. So you want to, and you know that it is a first come first serve basis. So you want the patent. So with the provisional application, you can file for the patent, but you have to be very clear that within one year of filing the provisional specification, you have to file the complete specification. So this is the procedural aspect of it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the question. Any queries? Okay, again. Uh, yeah. 
Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, I wanted to know, like, uh, what happens? Can you file a patent for increasing the scalability or the productivity of a machine? Let's say a uh, machine converts uh, seawater into drinking water at a rate of 100 gallons per day. And sea you water increase, into drinking water, okay. All right. Please, you are using practically the same machine, just changing a few kings here and there. No. But now you're getting, let's say, 200 uh, gallons mm -hmm. per day, about twice the amount of water. Is that mm -hmm. patentable? Okay. I just want one small clarification from you. Has before you somebody attempted on the same invention? Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. So I think this is very important. I will just, I would like to just share my slide also in that context, you know, so that uh, the thing is very, very clear to everybody. Uh, just give me a second. I think this part is very, very important for everybody to understand. I'll just run through it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's not necessary that you have modified something and you will not get a patent just because there is already a patented invention available. It's not the criteria. Suppose you have brought in a, ver a modified version and a result of the modified version, now you have a new machine, which is a technical advance over the existing knowledge, or it has an economic significance, you will get a patent over it, right? But the criteria remains, but the criteria remains that it should not be obvious to a person skilled in the art. Right. So what you have what you have told me is a very, very is a very, very uh, science based question. And let me tell you, I'm not a science person at all. Right. So let's say. You are the person who is working in that particular field, you know, that, uh, you know, you're doing a lot of research on drinkable water, let's say. Right. And there are 10 other people also who are working on drinkable water, you know, different sources of drinkable water. They're doing a lot of research on it. So the what you are doing, first of all, is that you are bringing in an improvement or which should be technically patented. But if it is of it is obvious to the nine other persons who are also working in the same area, then you will not get patent over it. But what if what you have created is not obvious The others could not have thought about it, you know, it was so genius of you to think about it. The nine other people who specialized or research in the work of drinkable water could not think about this process that you were thinking about that will grant you a patent, right? Oh, but if it is obvious, you do something very simple and the others say, oh, anybody can do it. It's so simple. And there are evidences to show in the court of law that it was a very simple process that you did. You know, so it will not be patented. So if you remember the Dhanpat said in the Neil Kamal plastics case, what Dhanpat said's company said was that, you know, we have brought in a new modified version. We know the bamboo kiltas or the traditional bamboo baskets existed, right? But we have brought in a plastic basket, which is which has an economic significance. It is now a better quality product because it will not break easily. The durability will be longer. And, you know, so we should get a patent over it. But what did the court say? OK, we will give it. But making it out of plastic, a traditional thing, making it out of plastic, is it a genius idea? Is it, an, is it, it, is, is it something which is non-obvious to everybody skilled in the art? So the court said that, no, what you are doing is not genius. It's not ingenuity. It is not non-obvious. Everybody knows that traditional items are now easily replicated into plastic. So although we understand that economically it is significant, so let's say the bamboo basket was 5,000 rupees, your plastic basket is just 1,000 rupees. We do understand that, but because it is so obvious to everybody skilled in the art, we cannot give a patent. A very important question, but the parameter how the codes would be decided would be like this. Uh, that whether it is obvious to the person or it is not obvious to the person skilled in that. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti Gogoi, for your intellectual inputs, uh, which will immensely help us without any doubt. So now I would like to request all of you to have a tea break. We'll meet again after 15 minutes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you again. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. In offline mode, in offline mode here, in our campus. Uh, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Your deliberation is very, very impressive. And so